Good afternoon. I am honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Priya. And thank you for picking up those phone calls uh, each time I call. Um, I, I should tell you that it's so nice to be in a place where they pronounce your name correctly. I swear to God, when I ran for the United States Congress in Illinois, um, I would introduce myself. I'd say, hi, my name is Raja Krishnamurthy. And this happened. Roger Christian Murphy. Very nice to meet you. I didn't know the Irish made it to India. And so uh, it's so nice to, to be here uh, among uh, fellow Indian Americans and friends. Um, I want to observe those three rules of public speaking. Be short, be sweet, and be gone. And so I want to just make a few uh, quick points and then allow you to continue with this wonderful conference. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to the Indian Impact Project and Fund. Can you give them a big round of applause for putting together today's event? Special thank you to all the board members, including the co-founders, Deepak Raj and Raj Goyal, my law school classmate, and Gautam Raghavan, the executive director. Can you give them a big round of applause for their day-to-day -day leadership? And of course, Priya, Raghu, Ravi, Vikas, Vinay, Ambassador Vinay, and Mini, uh, who have helped provide guidance to this board. What you're doing is incredibly important. You're providing funding, but you're also providing guidance. And that's so important uh, in this time when we have so many young, budding leaders and candidates who, with a little push, can get across the finish line. I, in particular, are proud of my future state senator, Ram Vilivalam from Illinois. Give him a round of applause. He was a beneficiary of the Impact Fund and uh, guidance from the Impact Board, and from folks like myself who did everything we could to get him elected. Because it takes uh, a community to get someone elected, and that's what we all did to get him elected, and I'm confident that's what will happen in your case, if you're a candidate as well. Now let me tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I was born in India, and I came here when I was three months old to the United States of America. And Initially, everything seemed to be going splendidly for my family until it did not. In the recession of 1973, unfortunately, my family hit the economic skids. But thanks to the incredible generosity and goodwill of the people of the United States and its government, we were allowed to move into project housing and food stamps. But thanks to the incredible generosity and goodwill of the people of the United States, we were allowed to stay in those programs until my father could complete his studies and find his first and only job in life in, of all places, Peoria, Illinois. He accepted the job, then they unfurled the map to find out where it was. Then they started, they loaded up the U-Haul in New York State and started driving and driving and driving until they reached Peoria. But that was the beginning of the golden period of our lives. That's where my parents bought their first proper home, their first proper car. That's where they educated their two children in wonderful public schools. And that's where they entered the middle class. And every night at the dinner table, my father would literally say something along, this, along these lines. Think of the greatness of this country. And whatever the two of you do, my brother and me, just make sure that that government is there for the next families who need it. And so that, is, uh, that became the North Star of my personal compass. My brother is now a physician at the University of Chicago. He's dedicated his life to basically providing health care to children and families in inner city Chicago. In my case, I went the route of public policy, law school, government, and ultimately politics. And now I serve in the United States Congress and I try to fulfill that pledge that I made to my parents, which is, how do I make sure? You should clap for my parents. How do I make sure that that government and that country is there for the next families who need it? Plain and simple. And so now I represent the 8th Congressional District of Illinois. You may be thinking, where the heck is that? The 8th District of Illinois are the west and northwest suburbs of Chicago. 
all the suburbs adjacent to O'Hare International Airport, including the runways, but not the terminal. And we can talk about gerrymandering in another discussion. But those suburbs may be well known to you. My wife Priya and I live in the suburb of Schaumburg. And this area is home to one of the greatest concentrations of desis of any congressional district anywhere in the country. Just to give you a flavor for what life is like in this district, my eldest son, his name is Vijay. And Vijay loves basketball, and he was on a basketball team of eight people, five of whom were desi, and both coaches were desi. <laughs> and so someone came up to me the other day, Ram, and he said, Raja, that team must be very bad. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 you don't understand. Every other team in this league in Schaumburg looks the same. So it's very fair and balanced, just like Fox News. And so it's only appropriate that this congressional district elect uh, an Indian American to the United States Congress. Now, I should tell you that I am now one of five Indian Americans in the United States Congress. I affectionately call this group the Samosa Caucus. It's a small but spicy and powerful group. And we all actually get along although we are on different places on the political spectrum. But we form coalitions, we work on bills together where we have common interests. But here's the point, here's the point. This group of people represents a political awakening. It represents that old adage, which is that if you don't have a seat at the table, you're on the menu. And none of us in this room are going to be on the menu, are we? And that is why we have come together today. The stakes could not be higher. The stakes could not be higher. And therefore, I believe that we have to reaffirm the ideals that make the country great and ideals that we as Indian Americans subscribe to. You've heard of this, the term evangelical Christian. I happen to respect them. I am an evangelical American. And from my bully pulpit in the United States Congress, I preach the values every single day of liberty, freedom, equality, hard work, and prosperity. And if you believe in those values, you are an American. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter how you pray, whom you love, or how many letters there are in your name. There are 18 in mine. All that matters is this. Do you live a life of character? Do you raise your children right? Do you work hard and play by the rules? And do you try to give just a little something back to your community and your country? Because if you do, you are an American. You are an American. And we in this room will stand shoulder to shoulder with you as you pursue your piece of the American dream. Am I right about that? And I want you to be cognizant of another fact. I am proud to be Indian American. I'm proud of my culture. I'm proud of my values. I'm proud of uh, everything that makes me who I am as an Indian American. And I'm proud of you. My name is not Bobby Swindle. <laughs> My name is Raja Krishnamurthy. I'm proud of every letter in that name, and I'm proud of every letter in Ambassador Vinay Dumalapalli's name, too. And I want all of us in this room to embrace our heritage, even as we go forward, even as we go forward and embrace others. Because I've recognized, I think you do too, if you don't respect yourself, nobody else will. And we will always respect ourselves. And we have to teach our children that, our grandchildren that, and we have to make sure our community remembers that, even as we go into the mainstream. Now, finally, I wanna make a call to action. 
And that is, all of you in this room are incredibly involved in your communities. You're so generous with your time and your resources. And now we need to take it to the next level. That starts with making sure everyone in our community votes. Secondly, it continues with making sure we volunteer for causes that are bigger than ourselves. And third, it means running for office. And I'm so proud of the fact that so many of you have already embarked on this journey. And I want us to inculcate that value, that message into our children and our grandchildren. When I was growing up, my father said, Raja, you can do anything you want to do in life. I said, really? And he said, yes, you can be a civil engineer, a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, or computer engineer. I said, wow, Appa, that's amazing. So I ended up getting a BS in mechanical engineering. I practice the BS now, not the engineering. <laughs> but the point is, even if you decide not to necessarily commit yourself to a, a life of public service, I hope that we will teach our children and grandchildren and our neighbors and friends in our community to at least commit ourselves to a season of public service. Now, running for office is a big step. I just met with my good friend Sanjay Patel, who's running in Florida for Congress. I've met with so, yeah, give him a round of applause. I've met with so many of you and I'm so proud. And I hope that more people will end up running for city council, maybe for state house, maybe for state senate, maybe some more people will run for the United States Congress, though not in my congressional district. <laughs> Anywhere else will be wonderful and delightful. But that being said, we need more and more and more. Because as we uh, pull up our seats to the table, we will make sure that our country lives up to its ideals. So with that, I close with my favorite saying, which is that yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today's a gift. And that's why we call it the present. I'm so honored and blessed to be with you here for just a few short minutes of your precious time to celebrate you to celebrate the impact that you're having through the Impact Project and Fund, and to celebrate how together we are going to make America a better place. I'm convinced of it. So God bless you. God bless your families. God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.